Welcome back to another Steam Deck video, guys. I'm Blaze 2 k and if you love Steam Deck content and want to see more of it on your YouTube homepage every single day, then just click the subscribe and click the bell icon right now and drop a like if you like this video. Anyway, today's video, as, as you can probably tell, is about the Steam Deck. And we've got a new Steam OS update, update 3.4. Um, the update basically beefs up the desktop mode and they've yet again <laughs> figured out how to get your Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons working with the Steam Deck for some <coughs> naughty emulation. All right, a nice Steam OS update has pushed the Steam Deck OS to a new version of KDE Plasma, which if you don't know, is the desktop flavor of Linux, okay, that Steam OS uses, um, which powers its desktop mode, and that has a nice pile of useful stuff that you might like to make use of. It incorporates stuff from the February, the June, and the October updates for Plasma, so it's a big bundle, a big, beautiful update for Steam OS, um, and for the desktop version of it, at least. Uh, the biggest features for the casual user are stuff like the new swipe gestures to make use of the Dex touchscreen, so directional swipes from the screen edge to open up your desktop grid, overview, open windows, and the desktop itself. You can also synchronize your desktop accent color to go alongside the dominant color of your wallpaper. Quite fun, combined with a picture of the day feature. So if you're big into the desktop mode on Linux, on Steam OS, with the Steam Deck, then you're going to love this update. It's just little, you know... Just little updates like this just that just makes things even better and more comfortable to use, especially on a touch screen, especially on the Steam Deck, right? Um quality of life improvements, that's the word I was that's the, the phrase I was looking for. Um so like little things like you know, changing your desktop accent color to go alongside your dominant color of your wallpaper. Just little things like that just make so much sense. That things like Windows and whatnot you know, users take for granted. Well, actually, that's kind of a new thing for Windows as well, to be fair. Um, the other nice thing is a bunch of new support for system tray widgets, which are which are extremely customizable under KDE Plasma. You can customize that to have stuff like better battery implementation or great on, for a mobile device, change text size and add text alongside icons. Very nice. Um, the update also um, otherwise tweaked a, um, sleep issues within a small number of titles where specific games would be frozen or exhibit glitchy behavior after waking up, which is great to see, So those are the ones that really mess with your experience. There are also some pretty neat new performance tweaks, like to specifically allow screen tearing, um, so you can minimize the latency, nice. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really big, I'm not, a, you know, screen tearing isn't a big issue for me, really. Except for the one time I played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on the Steam Deck, funnily enough, and it was just getting lines all over the place. So it that's the first time it bugged me, so maybe this is a good thing. Um, for those of y'all who wanted your Switch controllers to work again, by the way, had your wishes granted a few days ago, a hotfix made those get recognized. So now go to town with your Pro Controllers and your <laughs> Joy-Cons. Um, very good. So we've got the full patch notes over here on Steam. Um, bunch of issues a bunch of issues um like i says the sleep it like well the sleep issue is the sleep bug where it just doesn't wake up from sleep or it goes to sleep these are some of the big game like just not game breaking but like really uh, one of the big nuisances that i've had to deal with a few times on steam os where my steam deck goes to sleep and then i can't for whatever reason turn the screen back on um they've fixed a performance issue that could cause 100 millisecond hitches during gameplay if adaptive backlight was enabled i hate with a vengeance adaptive backlight um i hate it going up and down up and down up and down every time i move around it seems like it's always too dark so i that's one of the first things i turn off on every device adaptive backlight because i'm more than capable of adjusting my backlight for a certain situation right i don't need the the, com the phone or the device to try and work out what it thinks I want. I would rather just do it myself because it's not that big a deal. They fixed a driver crash with interacting with the map and Death Stranding Director's Cut. They fixed an issue with opening file managers if the game scope session has been restarted. Fixed the GPU clocks sometimes not sticking if set manually thanks to the Xperia 64 for the AMD GPU kernel patch backport. Fixed an issue with fan controller excessive sensor pulling caused sporadic fan behavior and high SSD temps on some NVMe drives. I wonder if this could be something to do with um, third-party NVMe SSDs like the one I installed on my Steam Deck. If you want to see me install a 2 terabyte SSD, go check out the video on my channel. I think the thumbnail is like, I have a 3 terabyte Steam Deck. Go watch that video. It was a really good video. I'm proud of that video. I <laughs> did pretty good with that. If you want some help and want to see me and see how to update or upgrade your SSD and how easy it is, really. Um, new fixture, new firmware for the docking station. They fixed an issue with HDMI 2.0 displays not being detected during wake or boot up. This is a pretty big issue, a big nuisance, obviously, if you do tend to dock your Steam Deck up to 
your displays. Um, performance profiles, they've added a new option, as we discussed before, from the article, um, the PC Gamer article, that allows you to turn on screen tearing at the cost of sometimes displaying partial frames, which does lower your average latency when VSync is disabled and the frame lim limit is off. So I'm, I tend to like lower latency over screen tearing unless the screen tearing is just terrible um, change performance had level to two uh, level two to use a horizontal layout it fits the letterbox space for games running in 16 by 9 aspect ratio very good um, so that's a nice little fix there so if you love the performance had overlay um, so games that have the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you'll know they have like the black bars at the top and bottom. You know, rather than have your performance overlay take like overlap some of your gameplay, they've they've literally changed it so it uses that horizontal layout so it stays within the black bars up and you know above the, the gameplay. Um, They've re enabled trim for internal drive as well as support external storage devices, improving write performance. They've added an eject option to, uh, for removable drives and settings. That's a really good idea. External drives formatted as AXT4 and they're automatically mounted and available for use in Steam. Yes. Um, so they've disabled Kernel DualShock 4 and DualSense trackpad. Mouse simulation when Steam is running. Okay. Changed timing of virtual key presses to improve game compatibility with on-screen keyboard. Okay, fix Steam inputs action set switching based on cursor visibility in game mode. Um, fix the USB crash when certain controllers such as the Hoi fighting stick. Um, oh, well, when using certain game controllers, okay. Added support for the 8 bit Ultimate Wireless Controller dongle, nice. They fixed some audio issues here. Fix the case where the default audio device would display echo cancel sync and audio controls would cease to work. This! Surely, if you've went into desktop mode ever, you'll have known. You'll you'll know that little pop up that always pops up, echo cancel sync. You know, I've never known what it was, but I guess they fixed it. It's from popping up now. They fixed the case where some applications would output audio to the wrong device. Okay, fix an audio driver bug that could lead to onboard audio crackling in some situations. All right. Um, now. They've basically, obviously, it's just improved performance, security, and stability for basically everything. Um, for underlying packages that are the foundation for SteamOS. So, Ste at the end of the day, guys, SteamOS is more future packed, more reliable, more stable, faster, smoother than ever. Um, that's a hell of a big update. Steam Deck OS 3.4, and they're always updating it. So, I'm excited to see what comes in the future. You know, we're always covering the little updates, the beta updates, the preview updates, and the stable updates on this YouTube channel. If you want to be up to date on all Steam Deck stuff, um, please drop a subscribe, drop a click the bell, ding the bell icon so you get notified because we post Steam Deck content every single day. And I'm going to be upping the ante a little bit as we get into the new year, um, posting multiple videos a day, tech, gaming, Steam Deck related. If you want to be part of it, please subscribe and click the bell icon. It really means a lot. Anyways, guys, if you like that, please like the video if you can it really helps out and i'll see you in the next video also if i don't see you before new year which i should do have a wonderful new year have a great time don't get too drunk all right and i'll see you soon all right take care i love you guys i'm blaze 2k and i'll see you in the next steam deck update video